Hello YouTube, welcome back to Panzer Corps with Lieutenant Joker. We are playing on Rommel and we are doing Kiev again. Again, we need to support Army Group South here to take the city and all the surrounding units before we can continue on to Moscow. So let's see how that goes. Again, um, I should try to limit my losses here since we're on rommel and we're not doing too great on the prestige front uh rommel and at most munchstein but also rommel i'm the most worried about my prestige situation same here again as last time in immediately attack before these guys can dig in anymore And hopefully achieve a breakthrough. I'm going to go full on with uh, my infantry here. Trying to get uh, not only artillery support, but also mass attack bonus. Attacking from multiple directions. In case you don't know how that works. Uh, if you have multiple units adjacent to a unit before you attack. That needs to happen before you attack. You can't move in one unit, attack, and then move in the other and attack while you attack. Multiple units need to be already next to the unit. Just like I did it here. And what's even more important, that it, you get a bonus only for units that can still fire. So units that have already fired that turn obviously do not count. This is always a very, very dangerous situation, putting my uh, unit in that middle section. Because it cannot retreat from there. I blocked my retreat path. But I'm always, so if they suppress me completely and then attack me, I might be in trouble. But I'm always hoping that first, they cannot completely suppress me. And second, they are uh, not willing to attack because the naval warfare is protecting me. And uh, since the naval warfare is in range, they're most likely going to shoot at that one anyway. Hopefully we'll do a little bit better uh, this time. Keeping the enemy air force away from my units in the south. Here an easy breakthrough again. I'm attacking from the south here, so if they retreat, they retreat towards my units, so they can attack and then still move, and they don't have to move to get next to the enemy unit. It's not so important here on Rommel, but on Guderian, you uh, can actually win a lot of time by using these tricks to uh, use the enemy against himself, making sure they uh, move towards your units, uh, that they run into attacks on their turn. That you ambush them. You want to be quick and efficient, you basically need to do damage to the enemy on their turn and on yours. And if you can force them to move towards your destructive power, then you still have movement left after you attack them. So that means you have more efficient movement. Now these four hits here that I took on my heavy infantry there weren't exactly great because if they now suppress me, that I could actually be in a little bit of trouble, but I don't think they actually fired at me. Forcing me to retreat here, but that's not a big deal since you have multiple waves of infantry down there and now they're reinforcing all their cities. Uh, this is actually a feature that I like that it doesn't exist in the later campaigns since uh, the AI doesn't have any prestige that exists, so they only have to work with what they already have on the map. I don't like that the AI is buying new stuff. Uh, you set everything up nice and historically. They had this much here, they had these infantry divisions here, and then you start the game and the... Um, AI happily buys new units that they didn't have historically. Um, I think that you should just work with what you have on the map. I should even... They should even remove the opportunity for you to buy new units. Uh, in a scenario, of course. Uh, between scenarios, that's a different story. But um, during a scenario, neither side should be able to get new units. Unless it's scripted, because historically reinforcement arrived or something like that. But um, 
buying new units kind of beats the purpose of uh, having a historical setup. And it's annoying uh, gameplay mechanic also. But these guys are no longer in a good shape to attack. I need to switch them out. Keep my uh, tanks that are moving up here out of visual range so they don't get attacked by the Air Force. And breaking through here at the edge. Always using the unit that is furthest in the back. Then moving up the next one. That way you get the most movement out of your stuff. Also using a little bit of mass attack bonus against these fighters. That's actually really important because mass attack bonus gives you not necessarily an attack bonus, I think. Um... I looked it up again, but uh, from memory, it gives you mostly a, a uh, initiative advantage. And as any experienced player will tell you, uh, the initiative value is what is most important in air combat. But there it really matters uh, who fires first, who sees who first. I mean, any uh, combat pilot will probably tell you that, well, pretty much that's true also for general in combat, but I think in the air it's very important. Whoever sees the enemy first usually wins. I think uh, there were also studies that that's true for tank combat as well. So that again represents initiative. It's actually pretty realistic because seeing the enemy first and getting the first shot off is usually what decides the battle. Or not a battle, an engagement, a single engagement. That's when it decides a single engagement. Here we have achieved a breakthrough, at least we're close to doing that. So moving all the units up. And uh, these artillery hits we just have to take. And then uh, we hope that we can take the Royal Air Force on relatively soon. It's unfortunate that they discovered this uh, bomber by accident by moving their own next to it. It was a random encounter, but it uncovered my bomber, so I just lost my overstrength on it. That was annoying, especially on Rommel. You really don't want to lose your overstrength on units because they're expensive. Here I made use of the mass attack bonus that I get from my Panzerjäger, so I attacked with it second. That way I still got the uh, bonus from it for the attack on the city. I decide consciously not to move over the river yet. I want to have all my firepower available before I do that, so I just move everything in position. And here my naval warfare units really help soften up, softening up these units. The rest I can move away, I don't need that anymore there. I have made a breakthrough. And here I need to start working on taking out the stronger fighters of the enemy. Right down here with the auxiliary fighter I just try to weaken these guys so they have to retreat. Heavy infantry to the front. I don't actually think anything like heavy infantry existed in the Wehrmacht. But um, as you will see in um, the coming up historical co-op series that I do with Brakada, I will uh, talk a little bit more about what's historical and what isn't. Uh, there were also no Panzer IV units or Panzer III units. The units are usually mixed. Panzer III, supported by Panzer IVs, later Panthers, but supported by Panzer IVs, and stuff like that. Um, it's the same with the infantry. You didn't have any heavy infantry um, regiments or something like that, or even battalions. But inside a battalion, you had certain companies that had heavy weapons, and those were supporting the normal infantry.
In this game, you can mix and match your units. Um, it's pretty unclear what size your units are supposed to be anyway. So you can still mix and match them and therefore simulating what was historical, that they were mixed and matched on a much lower level. Yeah, basically had a machine gun company in an infantry regiment, or actually had a couple of them. I think uh, in, a, in a regiment you had about, I think, four battalions. It really depends on... Uh, on the infantry regiment and what what structure it had, but uh, usually it had like four battalions, three or four, yeah, four companies each, and the fourth company was the heavy company. So he had three rifle companies, and then the fourth company was a heavy weapons company, which had a number of heavy machine guns and heavy grenade launchers or mortars. I guess uh, would be a term. So heavy mortars. And uh, those would be the heavy weapons support company that uh, would support defense or attack in the most crucial points. So uh, they would probably be more under direct command of the battalion commander or uh, be put under command of one of the rifle companies as support. So on an attack on a city or on holding a position, they would uh, rush to the most important sector and uh, attack. Uh, if you go for heavy machine gun, by the way, in the German military at the time, and actually it's still to this day from what I know, um, the heavy machine gun is basically the same thing as the light machine gun. It's exactly the same gun, but it's on a tripod. So if you fire it normal as the infantrymen lying down and putting it on the bipod um, that's on the front of the uh, machine gun, that's a light machine gun. And if you put it on a tripod in a fixed position, uh, that's actually the heavy machine gun. The uh, heavy machine gun position on the tripod, I actually fired a machine gun in the military from that tripod, which is probably exactly the same tripod. And except for the caliber, it's still the same gun. Uh, as I mentioned in another video, I think uh, I actually fought at some point with it. Well, I didn't fight with it. I shot it uh, just in training. Um, I uh, used a uh, MG3 machine gun that still had MG42 printed on it uh, or engraved on the metal, on the casing. And then they just uh, put a dash through that, so erasing it and... Uh, engraved MG3 or just the 3 so they stroke through the 42 and engraved the 3 next to it so it became an MG3 of course the, all, the inner workings are new it's a different caliber so it has a different uh, barrel but um, and I think a, a couple of other changes on the inside but on the mechanics but the outer hull basically Is the same thing as in the machine guns that these guys were using. Well, not at this point. At this point, they were still using MG 43s, uh, MG 34s, but the MG 42 that they get later, um, that's exactly the same thing. And we still do that to this day. We have the same tripod, and the advantage of the tripod is that you actually have binocular telescope. Uh, binoculars so you can stay in cover looking through the uh, binoculars that go that are uh, basically like a submarine you know going up and uh, going around the corner so you can see above the gun even though your head is still down and then you have a mechanism that uh, hooks into the trigger so you basically don't have to expose yourself at all to fire the gun and aim it um, and that, of course, gives you a very, very good position to uh, cover a certain area with heavy fire. And there's also there's also spring uh, loaded inside the uh, the tripod, so the the machine gun when it fires actually gets shock absorbed. So it's a very, very stable position. You can really, really carefully aim even at uh, long distances at or over a kilometer you can pretty much uh, pull
put heavy fire on a certain area. And you're completely safe since you do not have to expose yourself. So that is... Maybe you don't have more firepower in terms of heavy. But you're certainly in a heavier position and harder to take out since you, even if you get under, come under fire, you're in cover. So uh, you can continue firing even though uh, your gun position is under heavy fire. So it takes indirect fire and grenade launchers to take out such a position. Uh, direct fire from normal bullets pretty much don't do anything since you're in cover, you cannot be reached by uh, normal rifle ammunition. You need to be reached from the top with grenades or mortars or whatever. So that probably makes the position a heavy position. And as I said, you can engage at longer range and uh, can therefore probably be more effective at putting fire down a certain position. And that's exactly what these guys were using, so... Probably had a similar tripod for the machine gun that they're using here. Not sure whether the uh, new machine gun actually had a different tripod or whether that was just the same thing fitted for the new machine gun later on, but uh, it's a similar setup, I'm pretty sure. So these heavy machine gun companies, uh, they're called machine gun companies, but uh, they also had heavy mortars. Well, every light company also had machine guns, but they didn't have the heavy ones. Well, I think they had also a he at least one heavy one per company, but uh, the heavy companies really had six... I don't know. They had, a, they had quite a number of... Uh, I think they had six heavy machine guns and maybe four or six heavy grenade launchers, something like that. So they were basically consisting of just machine guns and mortars. But they really put some firepower. Well, the normal companies had some light machine guns and at least one heavy machine gun, but not in the number that uh, you needed to have a position. If you ever, I, I took platoon leader training, and if you ever had any infantry training, you know that all the heavy weapons, the machine guns, the mortars, uh, grenade launchers, whatever you have, anything that's not just a normal rifle, even stuff like sharpshooters and anybody that has a special ability or a special kind of firepower, is always the, in the direct uh, command, basically, of the higher commander, so he can put those weapons wherever they are needed the most. And uh, these machine gun companies uh, were, of course, the most important company of the regiment, of the battalion, I mean. Because they were really capable of putting a lot of firepower where it was needed the most. And that usually decided uh, whether an engagement was won or not. I recently found a book uh, where there's a lot of personal... Um, historical stories from soldiers from uh, one of the machine gun companies that engaged in Poland uh, of the uh, 41th Regiment, I think, of the 10th Infantry Division who pretty much fought at all the battles that we that we're gonna, or most of the battles that we're gonna fight in in Grand Campaign 39 so we'll probably read some of those um, while we are doing Grand Campaign 39, so you get a little bit of a picture of what these guys were engaged in. And, um, yeah, it's pretty interesting to hear, and uh, you can pretty much tell that once they get heavily engaged, they're really the ones that are hauling ass to get the ammunition back to the front, so they get more grenades for the grenade launchers, that they uh, really run into position to get their firepower where it's needed the most because they are usually the deciding factor in an engagement. Ah, these uh, switchable anti-aircraft guns are really a pain. It's actually a wonder that he didn't one-shot that light tank. Now here I'm running a little bit of out of, out of ammunition. That's uh, a little bit troubling. So... But since they are moving up to engage my infantry here, they are of course opening themselves up for engagement from the south. And I'm using that to my advantage here. 
suppressing the artillery so I engage this guy and if I don't out outright destroy it, it's going to surrender. And uh, then I'm giving this guy my opinion of him. And that's that. All the enemy infantry counterattack has been defeated. And now I just need to uh, take that artillery out. I don't want to move my Panzerjäger closer because then I can again be engaged by that anti-aircraft gun. The Panzer should be fine since he's protected by artillery, so... If you're protected by artillery, you're usually fine, except on Munchstein maybe, because uh, these anti-aircraft guns are pretty easy to suppress. So as long as I uh, have artillery support, they shouldn't be able to do much to my Panzers, but if you, if you let them catch you alone, you might be in a little bit of trouble. In case you're wondering, by the way, we don't, from what I know at least, we don't have heavy machine gun companies anymore, but uh, I was in Air Force Infantry, um, so I'm not 100% sure of the organizational structure of the Army uh, Infantry Regiments, but um, they might still have it. If anybody actually served in the German Army, uh, let me know that. Our guys uh, in our platoons, in the battalions, basically the platoon, has uh, has one section that's under direct command of the platoon leader, which has about three or five five heavy machine guns, and we didn't have any mortars, but that's because we're mostly defensive infantry. I'm pretty sure the army has a lot of mortars there too. So uh, there's a similar setup, at least. I don't. I think it's at a lower level, not at the company level. I might be wrong about that though, uh, again, I wasn't in the army. But it's a similar setup still. You have certain uh, dedicated unit parts uh, that have all the he that have a uh, concentration of heavy weapons that you can use to engage a certain uh, key area and certain key, uh, support a key engagement so you can strengthen a certain other units by giving it more heavy weapon support and I'm pretty sure other militaries are doing it in a different in a similar way so anybody certain another military in the infantry uh, you can maybe comment on uh, how you guys are doing it today and if you know how your country was doing it during World War two since I'm most familiar with the German setup, I know that the Italians had a very different setup of their infantry. Um, I think they had larger platoons or larger groups that weren't... Uh, yeah, I think they had larger groups where a group or a squad of German infantry was usually about 10 guys. Um, the Italian, but could be split into smaller subgroups. If we needed more flexibility, the Italians had larger units, I think of 15 or even 20 men, which were very, very rigid in their setup and couldn't be, uh, weren't as flexible. They also didn't have as much, much firepower, I think. They had a lot more rifles, of course, because of more people, but they didn't have as many machine guns um, per squad, so they didn't have the amount of firepower that a German squad put. Uh, could put down the range so very different setups so if you if you hear about uh, infantry divisions or infantry regiments or infantry platoons or whatever even down to the squad of different nations in a battle it's not always completely comparable they might have different uh, weapons they might have a different organizational setup uh, depending on how long they've been in battle, they might not even have the complete strength. They might not have the strength uh, to begin with, since certain countries had different setups. So a d division of one country had maybe 10,000 men, a division of another country may have 7,000, up to 15,000 men. It always depends on uh, what that country has as, as an organizational structure so just going one unit against the same size unit of another country isn't always telling you the whole picture 
you need to go a little bit more into the sources and figure out okay what what was actually in the italian company what did that look like and what did a russian rifle company look like Especially the Panzer uh, regiments in uh, early war in the in the Polish war. Well, based basically throughout the war, but especially early on, there were a lot of differences. Uh, some regiments didn't have any kind of Panzer threes and fours at all. Uh, some only had the Czechs tanks. Uh, some didn't have any heavy tanks at all. They just had uh, Panzer ones and Panzer twos. Nothing else entirely. While the, while the Panzer regiments that were used in the main thrust towards Warsaw did get most of the Panzer 3s and 4s available, but there weren't that many available in the first place, so even they only got 10, 20, something like that. While the majority was still Panzer 1s and Panzer 2s, and uh, that tells you that there's not even in a certain army, there's not even a unified setup. Um, in some battles here, okay, yeah, there's another Panzer Division coming in, but that Panzer Division might come in from a different battle, where they already lost half their strength. So, uh, they're basically uh, not a division anymore, they're basically just a stronger, a stronger regiment or something like that. Because half their guys are already out of action. They might still have the tanks, but they're damaged or... They don't have the ammunition for it, or they uh, they lost the crews, they were able to get the Panzers back, but they need repair and new crews, or they currently don't have the fuel to man all their tanks, and that's always uh, very, very hard to figure out, okay, who's actually engaging who here with what kind of strength. It's really tough here to uh, try and push anybody back here because I cannot reach the artillery in the back and as long as I'm not able to suppress that one, there's very little hope for me to actually break through down there. This time I'm not actually not very successful with my attack from the south here. Losing way too many units there. They pushed me away from the city, so they were able to buy reinforcements again. Time to at least get rid of the anti-tank guns, so at least my tanks can work, but uh, there's still the anti-aircraft guns that can switch. So, I'm a little bit in trouble here still. But, um... Trying my best to get rid of the most dangerous guns one at a time. But these uh, switchable into aircraft guns really are a major problem. I was trying to go for a surrender there, but unfortunately I couldn't suppress it enough. And my artillery is heavily running out of uh, ammunition, so thankfully theirs is out of ammo too. I'm trying to keep my own artillery out of sight. Do as much damage as I can to this thing, so uh, it hopefully won't take out my Panther three there. It's only an auxiliary one, but I need the firepower. It's very helpful to take out these guys, so uh, they don't gain the vision anymore from uh, that position so all of these guys in the middle here are now not visible to the enemy anymore carefully advancing making sure everything that's in range of one of these guns is protected by artillery now I'm helping with my efforts here I need to get rid of this stupid tank now it's down to one, so I should be able to push it out of there. But unfortunately, my attack got suppressed. So I unfortunately couldn't attack with the infantry that was in position to actually move into that section. Into that hex. This was a trap. Deliberately set up, so this bomber would run into my anti-aircraft gun. Another 
gonna bring in light tanks. Really struggling here. I'm actually doing a less good job than I did last time. I'm doing a little bit worse. Especially uh, wasting a lot of my auxiliary units, but... Um, at least now I'm able to take one of these guns out. At least I should be. So trying to suppress that artillery before I go for the attack. And that is, is at least one of them gone. And now I hopefully will be able to take out the artillery. Which is really a pain in the ass for me right now. Now the Panzer can engage since the artillery support is gone. Pushing them into the city, into close terrain where they're more vulnerable to my infantry attack. And then uh, trying to take care of this thing. They have to attack into artillery but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. One metal again. Pushing one of my tanks down here so I can maybe support from the back. Thankfully nobody moved into that hex so I can engage but uh, very bad engagement for me here. But I have to keep moving. Already going for the breakthrough down there. Bringing in support. But in terms of saving losses, I'm not doing too great. Especially my Air Force suffered way too much again. Suffered, I mean. So, not too happy. Enemy tank is now at full strength again, blocks that hex again, so all the uh, headway that we made down there is now gone again. So I'm pretty pissed about that fact. And it takes me way too long to dislodge these positions as well. Movement on an artillery piece, that's actually not bad at all. Range is always better, of course, but... Can't have everything. One more of the big guns gone. Slowly making progress here. We're treating that uh, tank since I basically saw there's only two anti-tank guns down there. Not the ideal way. Or not the ideal position to break through with a tank. Especially since I don't have any, any infantry support. I need all the infantry that I have right now over here. But at least uh, we managed to break through over here. So we can move already to the last town down there. And I already moved this tank up. I think I will follow through with that as well in that direction. Still suffering way too many losses here. Not making any progress down there. Trying to break through. Losing another infantry over here. Finally that one uh, artillery is out of ammo. I need to use this opportunity to really make headway here now. Take 
taking all the major guns out, trying to force some surrenders. There we go, that's one. Unfortunately not being able to take this guy out, but I pushed him out so I can now take it with this infantry. Unfortunately again, not taking it out. This is annoying, it might be able to reinforce. I might get to it with my air force. For that I need to take out that fighter first though. Now I finally can attack with the Panzerjäger. I couldn't do that before, it still had artillery support and an open top Panzerjäger is not good at attacking through artillery. Bring in more support. Putting my artillery into position. I'm trying to keep this tank down because he's the biggest threat right now. Now that I have some infantry support available, or at least in close proximity. And try again with my Panzer to break through. Here I get taken out again and there I miss that there's a bomber still at full strength. Since they re just reinforced. So that wasn't so good on my Panzerjäger. Thankfully it's a rather cheap unit. And finally we got la rid of another artillery. That other one is starting to reinforce however, so we need to take care of that real soon as well. Making a lot better progress over here. Supported by our pioneers. We got another city under our control, so now we're starting to get into the back of the enemy. We only have one fighter left, so I had to attack through the enemy uh, fighter protection because I want to damage that bomber so it doesn't keep on bombing my tanks. Going in with my panzer here, trying to take that guy out. Unfortunately, I can't get to that artillery. But hopefully it will just reinforce during the next turn and not actually engage me. Heavily dug in infantry and I don't have any artillery anymore to help here. Well, I do actually still do with this. I should have probably engaged that earlier, actually. Just like I didn't notice it now, I probably forgot about it while doing this. So I should have engaged there first and then attacked with my infantry. They're only auxiliary, but I could use their firepower still. And uh, again, I'm blocking myself here. I'm not making enough progress crossing this river. Oh, they actually did engage me. Well, that means they uh, won't be able to reinforce that artillery, so it will remain not a big threat. And now we finally made a breakthrough here. That means my tank can move up and finally take out this pesky artillery. And now we should be in a good position to uh, actually go around and help down in the south, since I still have not managed to break through there. Because their army, bro army group south still needs my uh, help desperately. But now that we're slowly freeing everything up, including my air force, which uh, again took heavy losses. We should be in a better position to uh, try and achieve something here. Thank you. 
Also trying to get rid of the last anti-tank guns in that position so I can attack that last stronghold from the west as well. Hoping to lure him into an attack on this unit so it gets pounded by artillery. Since the anti-tank gun only has one view range. Also great that this tank decided to attack, damaging itself in the process. Now I can finally work on uh, suppressing the artillery in this area. So I might have a chance to get rid of this guy, finally. Now I can move in, push the artillery out of the area. Which is really good. So now they can either repair the artillery or... That means it's not going to be next to the city. But they will get, not get to that, make that decision anymore. But even if they had, they could either move it, that means they can fire it. Or they can uh, fire or repair it, that means they're not next to the city anymore. So this pushing back would have been a great either way, even if I hadn't been able to, to uh, destroy it. But of course getting rid of it completely is always the better thing. And this light tank shouldn't be a problem. So I can move in, still under artillery cover. Now let's engage those uh, conscripts. Push them onto the river, where they are a good target for my naval warfare. Just pushing them alongside my units, always covered my units so even if I hadn't been able to destroy them in any of those positions they would have been adjacent by multiple of my units so they would never have been able to get out of there and reinforce pushing the enemy units into unfavorable positions is a very good thing to do finally the last fighter is gone now let's engage the bomber they're pretty much running out of airfields, so uh, they can't do anything anymore anyway. We're slowly starting to uh, get a major advantage here. Attack on the Suga, always good. And now these guys are completely helpless. All their support units are gone. Now we can finally break through down there. So this time we had a lot more trouble since last than last time. But uh, in the end, we were able to uh, achieve something here. Another surrender. Trying to force some surrenders here now to uh, get at least some prestige out of the out of this back. But overall, I think we could have done better, take le less uh, losses, but thankfully most of the heavy losses we took on the auxiliary units, so those won't be felt that much. But uh, our air force still took a lot of damage, at least our tanks are mostly fine. Only took heavy losses on uh, that one Panzerjäger, which is thankfully a rather cheap unit to replace. And of course, we're going to go for all the victory hexes here. Or all the hexes, rather. And of course, we're also going to go for all the units that are still on the map. Because we might be able to force a couple more surrenders. And even if not, we're going to need the experience. Since uh, normal experience is very important. Since experience means better defensive bonuses, and more defensive bonuses means less losses, and that means save prestige, so... Experience is very important. It's gonna save us money in the long time. In the long run. To make sure I keep at least one unit next to that hex up there. So they can't buy reinforcements while I clean up the rest of the map. 
And finally, we got this position. Really annoying position, this. Can also move in the naval warfare. The anti-aircraft gun can take a break. Moving it up here just uh, because I might be able to block an escape path for an enemy unit to maybe uh, force it to surrender, but I have more than enough units here, so I'm probably not going to need it even for that. Didn't get a lot of prestige out of that surrender, but everything helps. A little bit helps. Of course, these two uh, damaging hits on my uh, fighter more than made up for what we just got out of this. But um, that's just the way it is. Bringing the least damaging units so we at least get some more uh, prestige out of these surrenders. Pushing this guy back so we can block the last escape path of the uh, of this guy. And unfortunately, I didn't see that he could still retreat there. I should have blocked that hex. So I need to engage again and only get minimal prestige out of that one. And this guy, unfortunately, uh, no, I actually can block him with this. But I don't have any artillery left, and that last artillery that I had destroyed him outright. So, we just take all the per turn prestige that we have left. Hope it's gonna be enough. It's gonna have to be. And then, uh, next time... We're going to be in Guderian, where we have a lot less time to do this stuff. So we'll see how that goes. Take on the final objective, and that is it. We cleaned the entire map again. We are at roughly almost 2000 prestige. I would have liked to be a lot higher, because now we're going to engage Moscow, and that's going to be a... Yeah, not so nice battle. Lots of shitty weather coming up. So I wish we had a little bit more in reserve, but it's gonna have to be enough. So until then, keep your heads up folks. I'll see you on the next one.